Hey everyone, D Dub Squizzy here. Welcome back to Hordes of the Underdark. Alright, so we're heading out into Cania. We should have a little cutscene here of a soul getting devoured real quick. So this is the city of lost souls. There are the souls of the dead out here. There are Gitzari pilgrims that are trapped here, and then there's demons that work in a quarry. Okay, so now I've got some basic information. Uh, one lost soul apparently once tried to fight or defy Mephistopheles, who commanded them and consumes their souls to fuel his dead army on the surface. And she's been buried in ice. That spirit is Erebeth's spirit. And she's trapped in an ice cave. This ice cave right here, actually. And that creature there is the Scrivener. You can work with it to free her, which I will do. Um, there's these Velox nettles that are here. They have Velox berries in them. And the berries you can use to make fires that you can warm yourself with, otherwise you keep taking cold damage. But any kind of cold protection is enough to uh, protect you. There's also these pillars. Those are part of the Scrivener's quest line. Can't get at that one little piece of it. Yeah, those are Gitzari Pilgrims. So I'm going to head in here. This is the Temple of the Sleeping Man. The first uh, mission I've got. You want to read from the tome the moment you can. And finish reading that. So that you can get a... Uh, yeah, the fourth full mystery. There are five mysteries you have to learn in order to complete her little quest here. Okay. So basically, she's obsessed with this, uh, this planetar, I believe he is. Maybe he's a diva. I think he's a planetar, though. Who came here long ago to find his true love and has fallen asleep waiting for her. In, the, in a room behind this door. But you can't get through the door until you get the five mysteries about him. Who he is, what he is, where he's from, why he's here, and why he sleeps, th that kind of thing. Different people know different mysteries. That tome knows one of them. She'll tell you the first one and then tell you to seek the others if you want to meet him. You must meet him in order to progress the game. Alright, so he gave me one of them. I believe... It's either the quarry workers or the spirits that can give you more of them. Okay, so they probably give you the same one as the Githzeri. Um, but I think if I can talk to Aranes or um, some imps or something, will, will one of these guys tell me? Alright, so he gave me one. Not that. So now there's just the fifth fold left, which is the one that Erebeth knows. And I have never found anyone else that knows it, so I think you have to free her. Although I wouldn't swear to that. Even so, the sleeping man can only help you... If you... Uh, what do you call it? Also, I should talk to one of these Gitzari. The Gitzari are trapped here. They came here on a pilgrimage and now can't leave because Mephistopheles has bound them. Yeah, asking for some information on that gets you a little more XP. And then you can look into this crystal to see Mephistopheles conquering your world. So this is after he massacred everyone. I don't know, I think this is uh, the Valshares' fortress where he's at right now. And then he raises them all up using spirits from Cania to fuel his army. Frankly, he doesn't need an army. He's strong enough to conquer the entirety of all the world on his own. That was close. Those crystals can be found throughout Cania. Alright, so I've got all the side uh, mysteries taken care of, and then now there's a few other minor things to do. This here is the quarry. Gruel here 
is a big old nasty pit fiend. I would advise you don't attack him. So he can't do any business with you until... Whoopsie, didn't mean to do that. Until a problem with one of the grinders, the ice grinders in the quarry, is fixed. It's shut down because the imp stuck his arm in it so that he can get some sleep. Because he's lazy. Oh. You can light fires at, like, debris and campsites and stuff if you need to. I got a ring of power, so I'm not going to worry about it. That guy down there, lazy. So you have a couple options. The evil option is just to feed him through the grinder. Guru will be happy with you if you do this. You can also use a dexterity check to take it apart, and then an intelligence check to put it back together. But if you fail to, uh, to take it apart properly... Not take it apart. Taking it apart is the easy part, honestly. Putting it back together is the one that I can never seem to get right. Because it, it's an intelligence check, and my intelligence is never all that high. I'm going to use a cat's grace just to make sure I can hopefully take it apart. We'll see. I can't do business with him till this is resolved one way or another. Interesting, I got XP for that. I never never had that happen. Can I just mash it? No. Well, I failed a dexterity check. So I might not have a choice except to feed him through it. Which gets me some evil points, but it resolves the quest. Yeah, it's kind of annoying. I don't know why that gives you evil points. He's a friggin' demon. Oh yeah, there's permanent black on the map in this place too, and I don't know why. So, now I can do business with him. He takes things for 50,000 maximum. I'm gonna check out this thing, so... That's her temporary fire bonus that she added onto it, but I don't know what level the Valshress is. It's high enough that her dark fire thing is basically permanent. And then it's a plus six weapon that drains a bunch of stuff and has a six vampiric regeneration. It's worth way more than 50 grand, but that's all he'll give you for it. The matron armor is pretty good, but I don't like how it looks, honestly, and that's all that really keeps me from using it for everything. So, I have these very expensive things. Wow, some of these aren't worth as much as I thought they were. Risk taker is. And I knew both of these would be. Yeah, I knew all of those were. Those were good calls. These were not. That was. Okay. So I'm real rich, right? But I can get richer. If you notice, I kept risk taker. And that's because I believe I know a strategy that can get you infinite money. So, let's uh, go to the... this place over here, the tavern. This tavern's run by a black dragon. I've never fought him. Did I not take this bush? There we go. I must have missed that one somehow. Normally the bushes disappear once you loot them, all but this one. So lots of people in here. Arden Swift here has a horn you need to wake the sleeping man unless you're willing to stab him with a dagger. I'm not sure. I think I might have another option. We'll see once I get there. So this is the tavern keeper. He mostly just sells Velox nettles. Or berries. Not much. And then Resolvir is over here. He's a ghost now, but he's down here too. And yet, he still's got his inventory. Plus seven. Yeah, I'll take those. Tower shield plus six. Well, that's just straight up better than mine, isn't it? Sure, give me that. Full plate plus six. If it were more than plus six, I might take it. 
but the regeneration bonus is too significant. He has lots of equipment. Plus five and six stuff all around. But I don't think he can upgrade my weapon anymore. Yeah. So I might need to deal with Arden Swift later. We'll see. Let's go deal with the Scrivener and free Erebus. He has you solve a little puzzle thing. Snake-like creature swims through water. Well, 1 plus 1 equals 2. Glows brightly, Mr. Seymour. Complex equations. I think that's an answer to one of the mysteries if you don't already know one. Okay, so he wants you to take you to various pillars. A pair of images coalesce. The first is a sturdy oak, full with leaves. The second is a boy held in a man's arms. You can see a family resemblance, but the flaw doesn't seem to be the focus of the image. So, his puzzle's pretty simple. He uses portmanteaus, I believe they're called, which is words that, uh, that are combinations of two others. Each of these, see, that says Elysium, right? This one says treason. This one says alternate. The two things were an oak tree and then a father and a son where the focus of it was on the kid. Tree, son. That's what, that's what the puzzle is. So you just take him to it. And speak. Man on his deathbed, two others standing beside, side by side, then a fourth man's leg bared between his ankle high boots and knee length breeches. Also, this got on a quick one. Put this back. So, alternate uh, dimension. Yeah, so I think that's supposed to be like die and then a shin, which is what he's showing me. I believe it's this one. Yes. A traveler's resting house, shark cutting through water, close up of a winking face, and steam rising from a cup and saucer. The shark cutting through water is the real key. You know there's fin in the words somewhere. Infinity. And this should be the last one, I think. Oh, the answer to the second fold mystery is uh, this one here. No, not that one. This one. Elysium. That's where the, the Reaper, or not the Reaper, the Sleeping Man is from. That's the second fold mystery. And that's what he shows you. I remembered him taking me to another pillar before that. So then he'll carve her name into the wall. And for some reason, that clears the, uh, the cave entrance. And then he runs off. If you don't have anyone to play with, but you want to get the This Hallway's Getting Crowded achievement, which is just have four people or three other people in your party, having Nathira and Valen with you and then picking that thing up gets you the achievement. I think, actually, I might need some more V-Logs, too. I believe I need three in order to light a big enough fire to free her from the ice, because she's frozen solid down there. And she's still in blackguard form. And actually, let me look at this thing. Okay, this is still a max dexterity bonus of one. It doesn't go up to two. Let's just run off.
So she'll attack you. Hurting her enough makes her surrender. So she is still a broken person who Mephistopheles showed had no one to rely on. You can tell her to let Tyr decide if he'll still let her be a paladin or not. And then he will. And she'll be good again. That's pretty easy to convince a person who's been evil for ages to, to turn on that. And then you can pick her up as a party member. All I need, though, is the fifth mystery. And then she can stay here. I think you can romance her. I've never actually carried her through the game, though, because if I'm carrying companions with me, I always have Nathira and Vaylin. So now I've got all the mysteries. I can actually go in to see the sleeping man. And I should have an extra option I usually don't have, which is seeing into the sleeping man's dreams. If you have all the mysteries, simply answering with the first option should work every time. And then she'll give you her amulet. So basically the story with him is this. He came to Cania to seek, or he wanted to know who his true love was. I don't know why, that was just what he decided he was going to do. Because he's a planetar from Elysium, those are the first two mysteries. So he came here to Canium to find the knower of places. Well, the, the knower of names was who he came to find, I believe. Um, so that he could learn the name of who his true love was. On the way there, he met the knower of places, because he couldn't find where the knower of names was, and Mephistopheles had placed these powerful guardians in his path. Five of them. He had evaded three, killed two of them, the weakest of the two, and then when he found knower of places, he asked her where her sister, the knower of names, was. The knower of places... Uh, or he, he wanted to ask her that. The Knower of Places told him, though, she could only answer one question. And that, so he had to choose, you know, do I want to know what, what her name is so that then I can learn that? Or do I want to know where she'll meet me? And so he asked the Knower of Places, uh, where will I meet my true love? She said, at the gates of Cania. So he came here and then went to sleep and has been sleeping for ages. This gets there. He found him, idolized him, and basically worships him at this point. His true love, I believe, is the knower of places, or, yeah, is the knower of places. And so with this, I believe I can now focus on his dreams. Which gives you some more options. I've never actually done it, because I've never got here with a cleric. Once you walk in, there's a wisdom check, though. Focus on your thoughts, so then the world's where's the world at last result grows still and you find yourself floating through a pale white haze. Through the haze drift the sounds of battle, down to the Mephistopheles, long live Baron Molokroth. Molokroth is Lord of Cania. Right, so Molokroth was a alias Mephistopheles used. He concealed his identity, became a lover of the knower of knower of names, uh, and with her help found all of the lieutenants of his that were planning on betraying him. So he raised a, a rebel army as Baron Molokroth found out all of his real enemies, then revealed that he was actually Mephistopheles, and bound all of them with her in ice. And so, that's what Baron Malakroth is. Oh, smell of ale, warmth, fire, and the story of sleeping man had heard long ago. Treachery afoot, you can sense there is something Baron Malakroth has, told, has not told those who follow him. So move th forward through the mist. Pale white curtain parts to reveal a dozen devils and a stranger. White is the mist that cloaks her. One devil looms above the rest. Obese and toady clears his throat to speak. His form stretching, growing taller and darker. The Baron thanks the generals for their assistance. They cower in fear before him as he slowly takes his true form, that of Mephistopheles, the lord they thought defeated. He was a ruse. Younger in the dream than you remember him, yet taller too. One by one, he called the treacherous generals, generals by name, their true name, which she told him, and then he sent them through the starless skylic meteors wrapped in hellish flames. And then he sent them out as far away in Cania as he could, which is deep in the ice fields, and then locked them in ice.
And then she was in love with him, the knower of names was, I believe. Is you most of all, I must banish names, hold too much power in this place, and I'll not have you used against me. Woman's tear. I don't love you, I never did. And then he sent her away. Open the door, sleepy man stumbles through, grateful to be free from the icy wind. You feel yourself pulled through more corridors, down more rooms, a guardian, a beast left by Mephistopheles to bar the way, and then blood, so much blood. There was another like it somewhere, already dead, and three others more powerful at large. Suddenly you're in a room and a voice says you have many questions, I can only answer one. Find difficult to focus on the features of the room, it seems to be many places all at once, or maybe not a place at all. You don't know what to make of it. So that was his encounter with the knower of places, which was as far as his journey through Cania went. Voices female, not unlike the knower of names, as if she's had an older sister. Where am I? Where do I belong? Where was the knower name Spanish to? Where must I go? Where will I meet my one true love? Where is she now? Where will she die? Where will I die? Where can good be found? Where can evil be vanquished? Where can I find the truth? Lots of questions, but you can only ask her one. It is want for love that brought me here, knower, while I yearn to know where my true love is today, or where I might learn the name by which I'll know her, her answer. No answer you can give would help me. Instead, I ask where it is that I will meet her. Noah's answer is buried in a squall of purple snow as the sleeping man returns to the gates of Cania. He removes a ring from his finger and the world is white again. Yeah, so he wore a ring that turned the world purple and revealed doors that led him through Cania. Without it, you can't really traverse the place. The Noah gave the gates of Cania as the answer. The city doesn't seem to exist in the sleeping man's dream because it didn't exist yet. The gatehouse's portal lies exposed atop a plane of ice. The city must have been built up around at a later date. So he doesn't know that this monastery is here, or that any of the rest of these people are. But the ring is what's important. Split into three interconnecting bands from which it was fashioned, and he built a chamber for it. In there. Superman is settled into a deep slumber, void of dreams. Okay. So I've never actually done that. That's interesting. And if you wake him using either the horn or stabbing him with a dagger, which are both options, Sensei will go crazy, run in here, and try to kill you. This way, she seems to have been left alive. So with that done, there's this prayer card here. Um, it's a clue. I learned to hope when I became a man. I hope matured into faith. I became a fifth bear's love. HFL. Those are important. So he's got some guards defending uh, the parts of the ring. And you have to kill them all. They're pretty... I am not ready for this. Yeah, I can't upgrade the shield any further. So I might as well get rid of that one. Let's take it to spell magic. Okay, now I should be able to take these things on. So four skeletal minions, then a big old skeletal mass that they all form together is what guards each uh, each part of the ring. And man, are they nasty. But they're worth a lot. Okay. Uh, I didn't think this one through. I only caught one with that? Come on. Alright, I think I could just straight fight them. It's dangerous, but I think I can take them. I want to get the rest of my abilities going, though, so then I can tear them up worse. Fortunately, I'm using a blunt weapon, so I'm dealing max damage. I think they're also undead, so I could just blast them with a pile of, uh, with a mass heal. That would be the big one for me now. These won't last forever. Hopefully they'll be long enough to give me a bit of an advantage. I've got to kill three big ones and twelve small ones. Fights in this chapter are just devastating at most points. There he is.
So one piece down. Some of my stuff is starting to wear off. Whoa, come on. Really? A crit? Boy, they hit way too often for my liking. That did nothing. Why do I have that spell? Does this hurt them? Oh, it hurt that one. Okay, always very much a nasty encounter, but that should be it. And now I can claim all the pieces. And once you hold them, you can use any one of them. Yes. And then put them together. So that prayer card, faith, hope, love. Faith. Hope, faith, love. There we go. And now the ring is assembled. And it does this when you put it on. So this lets you see doors that let you traverse Kania. What it also does, though, is show you these treasure chests that are hidden around and have all kinds of stuff in them. I would advise you do once-overs of most areas once you have this ring. So he's still asleep. There's an altar here. That is a very valuable helmet. And now you can see these arrows hovering off the ground. Those point you in the right direction. I want to see if she has anything different to say. This is real interesting. I've never actually done this with her still being alive. And I didn't have to worry about uh, the Swindler Artino Geth, either. He's normally quite an issue. He was the guy, the tiefling in here. He has the horn that can wake up the sleeping man. If you're not an evil guy, and you don't want to stab the sleeping man with a knife, the only way to wake him up, if you fail your wisdom uh, check, is to use the horn this guy's got. To get the horn, you have to beat him at this absurd game that requires a high wisdom anyway, because you have to be able to tell if he's lying or not. And it's kind of nonsense. That's got to be a valuable one. Black Bow of Baytor. Yeah, that's plus eight. That's going to be a real valuable one. I'm going to sell off most of this stuff to him. Because I think he gives me at least better prices than Gruul. Yeah, and he goes up to 50,000 anyway. So the Sensei's Amulet 
and the puzzle ring here are both important pieces of the puzzle for the rest of this chapter. They're like plot items. This is a chapter filled with gimmicks. From the ice stuff outside, to the V-Box lighting fires, um, using the rings and necklaces that they give you and stuff. And then it, it gets even more complicated and somewhat annoying. So now, I can take out the dagger. And I have a plan. I'm pretty sure this will work. We'll see. Hold on. Oh, it's gone now. That's weird, isn't it? Yeah, see, I have a second one of these bows. Um, let me go back to the monastery. Basically, there's some weird glitches with the items in the puzzle realm. With the searchable things. And I want to exploit them for money purposes. Right, I didn't finish what I was saying about Arden Swift, did I? The solution if you can't figure out his stupid game is very simple. Kill him. I always do. If I'm not... This is the first game I've ever played where I have not killed him. His game is, uh, is a simple concept. He takes a card, you have to guess which one it is by asking a limited number of questions. Yeah, the altar's gone too. That's... Wait a minute. I think something glitched. Hold on. Let me uh, quick save. Because I'm pretty sure that altar should still be there. No, it's gone. What's going on? The chests are gone, too. What the heck? Well, that's annoying. I wanted to use those. I want to see if there's one more somewhere. There might be one around the quarry. I can't remember. Pretty much, if you're wearing, if you're looking in the, the box and then you take the ring off while you're looking in the box, it will close itself and then drop what you were looking at on the ground while not actually removing it from the box's inventory. So basically, you can duplicate any item you want. I planned on duplicating Risk Taker here, so that I could make as many of them as I wanted to, have as much money as I needed to pay for the absurdly priced things in this game. And the prices in this chapter of the game alone justify removing a price cap. But I don't think there is anything else to loot. Why did they... They don't usually disappear once you're done looting them. That's... Why did they do that? Did it figure out what I was doing and stop me? There we go. The iron skeleton. Plus six full plate. Yikes. And immunity to illusion magic, I think. Okay, so if I do this... Yes, it drops the dagger on the ground, and then... Interesting. It repopulates the original stuff, but with extra loot. It doesn't, uh, put back into it. And now it's gone. Oh, because I looted the whole thing. Right. Okay, well that answers that question. It doesn't duplicate just anything, so I can sell Risk Taker. That is a way you can get rich pretty quick, though. Storm Giant. Oh, 10 strength. Yeah, so it won't go up any higher, but now I don't need this. I can wear another necklace. What's your best natural armor? Plus seven? I'll take it. Bam! Untouchable. Okay. 
Actually, did he have... I didn't check. I want to see if he had Boots of Striding plus 10. My Nymph Cloak can't get any better. Well, actually, I sold him the Iron Skeleton. How much is it to buy one of these? Very expensive, but I can afford it. I've got 3 million right now. Plus 3 to Dexterity. Plus 6 on the armor. If I bought a Nymph Cloak plus 10 from someone... Maybe. This guy, though, doesn't have anything. And you don't have the kind of Nymph Cloak I want. Or the kind of Boots of Striding that I would like. Because, see, the 3 Charisma off this is just... Well, is it really... Do I need it? I mean, it's 4 from 6. But there aren't that many undead down here, either. No, and I'm going to be getting hit a lot. I'm just going to do it. The regeneration, while helpful, is not something that I need to keep around. Okay, so 47. Don't need that anymore. I can get rid of the last magic vestment. Uh, prayer, I think, is just a buff. Plus one to attack and damage, skill checks, and saving throws. Yeah, it's not a lot. It's a little bonus, though. I can replace this one. All right. So I think I'm going to leave this episode here. Maybe not. I should probably finish what I started. There's a nasty encounter up ahead. I don't know why I'm sitting at the entrance to this thing. Oh, Resolve here. Right. He might have what I want. It's so early in the morning for me. I fell asleep around 1 or 2 in the afternoon today. Yesterday, actually. And, uh... And I just, I woke up around like 8, so I had like 6 or 7 hours of sleep in the afternoon without even really trying. It just happened. And now I don't need any sleep. For a while. Okay, so Boots of Striding plus 7 or what I've already got. And no, he doesn't have what I want. A, clo a Nymph Cloak plus 10 or anything like that. This thing also gives me more Dexterity though. Wait, so do I even need Cat's Grace? Well, Cat's Grace gets me an extra point. So yeah, I should keep that around. Now it's guaranteed, though, to get me to 47. I will lose a regen point from the Lantern's Ring as well. Three should be good. Plus, I'll get hit way less. So, to progress from here, you gotta go through this door. Make sure you're done with your business, because once you start going on your Odyssey, you cannot just come back at any point. You'll get trapped out there. This is such an OP weapon. And I'm up over 400 hit points. Yeah, let's get going. So, a Guardian of the Path is up ahead. Guardians of the Path are wretched creatures. Very powerful. But the worst part about this fight is that it's going to be using the Sensei's amulet to randomly change me into other creatures. I should get the Lantern Ring on for this one. Yeah, see, it's this thing. It's strong, and but, it, but what really messes you up is the random shape-shifting throughout the fight. See, it does this. It'll time-stop, do this really long, spinny thing to show you, hey, you transformed against your will. But it looks like my... Weapon was still in effect? It is. Oh, my bonuses are still in effect. They're all temporary. There's three of them. A wolf, an earth elemental, and, uh... And a pixie. And I want to get this out of the way now so I don't have to deal with it later. If they have to hurry it through, because it, it all has to happen during the fight. 
So the more damage you deal, the faster they take effect. Ow. Boy, that magic damage is pretty helpful. So. Now that's done. This is one of those gimmicks I was talking about. So let me throw the ring back on. Take a look around. Doesn't look like there's any puzzle chests around. I haven't memorized the locations of all of them because... Well, frankly, this chapter is all like a whirlwind every time I play through it. And every encounter is like brutally... The, the enemies are so much stronger in this chapter than they were in the one before it. And since this whole thing is linear, they can properly set it all up. So this is a super sword. And then this is a letter from Mephistopheles. The way all of his uh, lieutenants, the guardians of the path here, the three of them that the sleeping man left behind, they're antagonists throughout this chapter. All of them basically are magically attuned to Mephistopheles so that when one of them writes on it, the other one has a letter that can read it as well. So when he writes something, Mephistopheles immediately sees it on his own letter and can write on it, and it will appear on this guy's letter too, so they can communicate that way. Um, let's see here. I think I can get rid of that. I need to make a little room for these. Oh, wait a second. That's not right. There we go. Um, so I'm wearing the amulet now. Readjusting again. Let me do this one. Assign this unique power. Okay, so the power, when you use it, you can use one of these and it'll transform you. I just want to know what each of them does. So you do it each once. Now it tells you it's a pixie. And you can't cancel the transformation on this one. I don't know why. Normally, you can just cancel Polymorph like I did with the Pixie just now. And the reason that that amulet is significant is because of this. Taste of Taste of my rock. There are small puzzles and stuff like that throughout this entire chapter that can only be solved by creatures of particular size. So, that's what this chapter is going to be. Lots of fighting against very strong enemies, lots of puzzles. But I imagine if most people have stuck around to this point, you already know that. Well, I'm going to end this one here, then. So I've got all the gimmicks down. No, that's not true. There's another one. But we'll encounter that later. Some real nasty fights coming up. And uh, probably between two and four more episodes. I don't know exactly. This Vicania always is like a labyrinth to me. Which makes sense. That's how it's supposed to be. My first target, though, that the ring will take me to is the Knower of Places. Because that's as far as the ring took the Sleeping Man. And then once you meet her, she won't tell you where the knower of names is, because she thinks you're the planetar because you have the ring. And she says, well, I already answered the one question, I can't answer another one. What she will do is put another uh, branch onto the ring so that it will guide you to the knower of names instead. And then you have to free her. But all of that is going to be happening in the future. We're closing in on the end. So thank you all for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.